Shalom. We're continuing this about the race of Christ, who was asked recently by one in the Ukraine, um, is Jesus Christ, is Yeshua HaMoshiach, you understand, is Jesus Christos Getachin, is he black or white, right? And now that's a question that most of you might say, oh, he's black, he's black, and and that that does answer it, but does leave some it leaves some confusion there because we are, in a sense, waving our true nationality. We're waving on a certain level our natural right and our natural name when we get into that black and white kind of argument that that many you know are getting into black or white. Of course, Christ or Yeshua, according to the Bible. Right, and the evidence that we have in this modern world, he would be considered, if he had ID, then Jesus Christ's ID would basically say um, probably Negro at one time, and maybe now we'll say black or African American, or at least, you know, something that reflects the black people in this northern hemisphere, America vis a vis the prophecy and vis a vis where we're at, even in this Torah portion. So, in speaking on the subject matter of tribes, the better that we understand who we are, our identity, Yosin in the Mushiach. So that means we have to recognize, well, who is the Mushiach? Now, what is very key, and we touched on it before, but it bears repeating, is that the scriptures tell us that Satan Diablos would deceive the whole world, but that there would be a, a shortening of the time. That, that the Almighty would shorten the time for his elect's sake. And then Revelation also tells us that this people would have a new name. You understand, as Aina, as Rastafari, we have a new name. But where some have gotten it wrong is that they tried to introduce a, a so-called new spirituality. You understand, remember Yeshua HaMoshiach, you understand, the Messiah, Jesus Christos, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, so when we look into yesterday concerning history, what is the evidence that we get? Well, first of all, the Bible teaches us that Jesus Christ, according to the Bible, was a, quote, Jew, right? A Jew, or a Judahite, a Yehudawi, or Yehudi, according to the more fuller, contextual, grammatical, Afro-Shemitic kind of sense of the language, the lingo. But now in the King James Bible, we have Jew, right? Even Christ says to the, the, the woman, mm, he says to the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, he said that y'all, the Samaritans, y'all worship that which you know not. We know what we worship for salvation is of, of the Jews, or salvation is of Judah, Yehuda. All right, now it's no accident that his imperial majesty is Moa on Bessa, the Imnegeda Yehuda, and that Ethiopia has that, that strong historical link. It's the only ones that don't recognize it are the totally unconscious and the semi conscious ones, and there are some ones who go in and out of consciousness. You know, saying they don't really fully recognize it. The price of the truth, of, first of all, you have to have a love of the truth. Because knowledge itself will just puff up. But if you have a love of the truth, then what you find to be the truth and you're able to weigh and balance as truth, you are going to, um, your, your feelings, you understand, your feelings about it. If you have a love of the truth, your feelings can be subordinate to what the truth is. See, a lot of us still being spiritually immature, or when we are spiritually immature, we are being led by our feelings, you understand, by our feelings, by our emotion. And almost we become not, not humans in the sense of being created in the image and after the likeness of God, but we become more, more animalistic or more instinctual. You understand, we lack the ability to reason. So let's reason, all right, let's be reasonable about this particular issue. Now some would say, well, black folks who say that Jesus was black, they're just trying to do this to make ourselves feel good. And, you know, and something's wrong with that because it sounds like, well, they want us to feel bad. It's like when we mention this particular image right here and we put up this image, let there be light, right? 
when you put this image, some say, oh, this is black liberation. Mm hmm They say this image represents black liberation. And they speak about black liberation as though black liberation is a bad thing in principle. You know what I'm saying? In principle. You know, some folks may have differences of opinion about what black liberation looks like, but in principle, anybody who is about the truth, anybody who is about a true spirituality, wouldn't want a people, you know what I'm saying, to be enslaved unless they profited from that and they were evil-minded or they were complicit with evil. You know what I'm saying? So when we speak about, well, what race, right, what race? Now, biblically, what is race? Do you find the word, some people say, well, race is not in the Bible. But race is in the Bible. If you study and show yourself approved, the word seed, when it speaks about the seed of Abraham, right, when it speaks about the seed of David, you know what I'm saying? It is speaking about a particular race. Now, the Roman historian Tacitus, I think his first name Cornelius or something like that, but the popular last name, you can look it up, Tacitus, he says that the Jews circa 70 A.D. Now, 70 A.D. is very important to I and I as, as once lost but now found data Israel because it was the last stand of our Israelitish sovereignty. You know what I'm saying? It was the last foothold, you understand, know of our of, of any semblance of us being a nation. And then the Roman armies of uh, Vespasian and, 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 and Tito or Titus, they basically laid siege to Jerusalem, you understand, and they starved out the people, they fought the people, there was bloodshed, they destroyed the temple, they stole the gold, they stole things, they killed many of the black Hebrew Israelites, you understand, or of the Ethiopian Hebrews, and many were carted off into slavery, many fled into Africa. You have the, the Jewish historian by the name of Flavius Josephus, which even points out that many of the Israelites who were fleeing from the European or the Romans, remember the Romans were European. Now, it would make absolutely no sense if, if, if Jesus Christ was a European for the Europeans to do what they did. We have to remember that Europe did not accept, speaking of white Europe in total, did they really accept Christianity until later on when they were able to do this right here. Mm -hmm. So once they were able to whitewash this image, now you'll learn about the iconoclast phase, you understand, where they were breaking so-called idols. But they were not breaking idols because people were actually worshiping um, these, the, 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 the original black images, but they were destroying it because the Europeans, that other seed, you, you know, when you come down to it, it's about two seeds. Now, one manifestation that has been the European, the white and black thing, you know what I'm saying? But, like, we maintain that the white man, the European, has been deceived too. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and this is probably... This is even a more powerful deception if you really think about it. Frances Cress Welsing, the ISIS papers, and, and, well, she's one who really breaks it down on a psychological, scientific level that when you really study it, you can match them toe-to-toe -to -toe on any of their academic psychological jargon because she, she breaks it down in very simple, plain, and, 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 and easy-to-identifiable terms that white supremacy, this whole idea of white supremacy, even with Adolf Hitler and the Nazis and the neo-Nazis and the rest of them, that whole idea of white supremacy is a lie. You understand? And it's from the father of lies. You understand? So the European has deceived himself into believing this, and not just himself, but he has forced this image on many native peoples, on many lost sheeples all over the world. And this is not Jesus Christ. His name is Caesar Borgia. So in a sense, Jah, God, Yahweh, ha Elohim, Hashem, gave the lost sheeple exactly what they wanted. They said when Yeshua HaMoshiach, one who looked like this when he was crucified, you know, or when he was about to be crucified, they said we have no king but Caesar, right? And how ironic they would get a guy like this, Caesar Borgia, 1492, and it's his image he was the son, the illegitimate son of Pope Alexander VI, 
right? Pope Alexander VI had an illegitimate son whose name was Caesar Borgia. When you go deeper, you find out that his sister Lucretia, or we like to say the creature, that she basically became the image for the white or the European, the romantic, the Renaissance painting of Mary. And then a lot of other people now have adapted that image. You understand? But there's the true image that even the popes have in the back, like the, the last pope, John Paul, you understand? He had it in the back, and he would worship this black image. And, you know, you've probably seen the pictures out there, the out there, how he worships this black image. And in many of the European countries, um, such as Russia, many of the preserved, some of the original images of, of, of the, not just the black Christ, but the, the black Ethiopian Hebrew presence in the Ethiopian race, in the black race, was heavily pictured and we have a lot of images even today, you understand, which are circulating around there. So the one who wrote us um, and asked a comment from Ukraine, I would say to look into some of the older churches at the church images, you understand, and you will see that the older church images, and many of these churches I know were destroyed. The, 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 the Nazis destroyed a lot of this um, imagery or secreted it away you understand, or exchange it, maybe gave it to the Vatican because they're collectors of these things. But in Russia, under Stalin, you understand, and under the whole Russian Revolution thing, they destroyed a lot of these images and a lot of the things had to go underground. And now it, with the reemergence of Russia, they're putting forward the counterfeit images too, and they're not really holding up on the true image of Christ. Now, a lot of folks would say, well, how do we prove that, Jesus Christ, in truth, the Jesus Christ was Yeshua, HaMoshiach, how he was of the race of the Ethiopian, in other words, being identified as a black man, a Negro, African American, or, or, or a, a you know, black man today. You understand? It's very easy. First of all, as the Bible says, he was a Jew, a Judahite. So we have to identify, well, from that time do we have any secondary witness to what the Jews look like at that period of time. And we do. We have Tacitus, the Roman historian, who says that the Ethiopians were of the race, right, or, or that the Jews were of the race of the Ethiopians. He uses the phrase in Latin, Ethiopum prolum, right, Ethiopum prolum. So he said the Jews that he witnessed and that were witnessed by all the Romans. I remember he wrote these things. And if the Jews were of a different race and he wrote these things, he would, he would, he would not be considered the, the great Roman historian that he was because there was, there, there was a bunch of witnesses. They took these people into slavery, you understand? Now, at that early time, what was interesting is that many of the Europeans, many of the white people who worshipped all of the Roman gods and the Caesars and everything else, they began hearing this good news. They began hearing of this gospel, you know what I'm saying, and as it was being preached and proclaimed by Juario Paulos and, and Petros and others in, in that Middle Eastern region and Europe, Middle Eastern, North Africa region. And many of them forsook Caesar and the Roman gods and, and, and Jupiter and all these other idols that they were worshiping, and they worshiped the as we would say, the black Christ, you know, or the black Messiah. They worship the true Yeshua HaMoshiach as an Ethiopian. But you know, you know how they say how, how white folks can be in that sense, and historically it's proven so that there was a backlash against it. So when we hear about the martyrdom of many Christians in, in the earlier days in, in, in Rome, that a lot of them were of even the household you understand, of the, of, the, of the Caesars and of those who were in power. In other words, the truth is that powerful. The truth is so powerful it would even reach, you know, the so-called sons and daughters of the operators of this evil world system, which is under a, a spiritual being. You understand, there's, there's a whole spiritual, see, there's, there's, there's a whole veil. This whole veil hasn't fully been ripped you open, but many ones and ones know that there's a whole spiritual reality behind this. This is why we say that the Europeans, you understand, they were deceived even in white supremacy because science will tell you that there's not such a thing as white supremacy 
even genetically, so forth and so on. You know what I mean? And this is just to show, you know, they say that European genes are recessive, so forth and so on. You understand? And not to get into some of the more radical, fanatical kind of rhetoric, you understand? That right there in itself proves that the black gene, if one drop of black blood makes you white, it doesn't go the same way with one drop of white blood. You, 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 you understand that? So Jesus Christ, it's very easy to prove that, that he was of the prolem or the Ethiopian prolem, of the Ethiopian prolem of the race or the seed of the Ethiopians. In other words, he would be identified today as being a black man. But then some say, well, what do we say now to those folks who say, well, it doesn't matter what race Jesus was. I mean, that's a, that's a real, that's a cop-out, as they call it, right? Ain't that cop-out? After we went through all this work of gathering all this information, intelligence, and prove that point, instead of saying, wow, that is correct, because they don't have a love of the truth. You see, the Bible tells us something important in Thessalonians, you understand, know, concerning the love of the truth. You see, um, ones can be forever learning and never able to come to the acknowledgement of the truth. And I pray that I and I, and especially you all, my brothers and sisters, are not those who are forever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Because it says right here, it says, um, it says remember ye not, the Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 5, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. The mystery of iniquity, the mystery of rebellion doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let. Now that word let actually means to prevent or hindereth. You see, that's let. See, the English language is very, it's, it's a lot of connotative twists and turns, so learning the etymology of English would really open up one's eyes. So here, let doesn't mean permit. And let actually means hindereth. And if you have a Schofield reference or download it from our website, lojsociety.org, the PDF version, you can go and look on page 1272. And if you look in the margin, right, um, it says hindereth for the H subscription next to let. So let's read it as we can overstand, now that we understand that let, letteth, doesn't mean um, to um, allow. It actually means to hinder or prevent. It says, for the mystery of iniquity, which is, they say, lawlessness, which is, which is rebellion against Jah's law, doth already work. Only he who now hindereth will hindereth. You understand? He who now hinders it will hinder until he be taken out of the way. So there was a mystery of lawlessness that was already working, but there was one or there was someone or something that stopped it from breaking out. You know what I mean? It's like it was there, it was doing its thing, but something was holding it. And it said that that one would be taken out of the way. Verse 8, it says, And then shall that wicked be revealed whom Adonai, or the Lord, shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. So it says that Adonai will consume this one with his word. I mean, that is truly word, sound, and power. Adonai, the Lord, right, shall, con and speaking of Yeshua, HaMoshiach, he shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of, of his coming because he is truly the one who is not even illuminated. It, it is Yeshua HaMoshiach who is the great illuminator. You understand? He is that one that's going to destroy Satan with his word, sound, and power and with the brightness, you know what I'm saying, with the brightness of his coming. So he is truly brilliant. Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior, is truly brilliant. Right? And that's how he's going to destroy Satan with his word and with the brilliance, you understand, of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Now, Satan is a Hebrew word that means enemy. And we mentioned this before with some of the chatter 
about the Rastafarian so-called satanic Bible and this thing going on that it's kind of interesting because these ones seem to affirm some of the basic foundational things that many other Rastas and Rastafari affirm. But when you look at it in the bigger picture, that to the Antichrist, if we're of the true Christ, the King of Kings and his Christ, and they are of the Antichrist, right, that means that the true Christ to the Antichrist is considered Satan, because Satan means an adversary, an enemy, an opposer. There's a verse in the scripture in the King James where it says that the Lord, Yahweh, became a Satan. He became an adversary. You know how they always picture and paint like good guys wear white and bad guys wear black and you know this whole idea that if you're black then you know you bad and you evil and if you white lily white you good you know so people you have to recognize how this deception has been programmed into us even subliminally you know saying subliminally you right now it says that even who's coming is after the working of Satan right of Satan right and it says, um, let's see right here, it says the coming of Satan, and it says um, with all power and signs and lying wonders, lying wonders. I mean, we live in a time of power, of all sort of signs, all sort of lying wonders. It says with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Now, it's key for us to recognize everything that is not like Yeshua HaMoshiach. Everything that's not like Gitachi and Jesus Christos in spirit and in truth is unrighteousness. Everything that opposes that truth of Yeshua, you understand, in spirit or in reality, you understand, is of that unrighteousness. Unrighteousness in them that perish. Because, and why do they perish? This is what we wanted to show you and share with you. Verse 10, it says, because... They received not the love of the truth. So no matter how much some of you all may want to show one the evidence that Yeshua HaMoshiach, that Jesus Christ truly is and was and will be a black man, and then you prove it in Ethiopia and you go through all the evidence, some folks you wonder why, like, how come they still don't get it? Because they received not the love of the truth. You see, they're forever, as the Bible says, forever learning but never able to come to the acknowledgement, that means acting on what they know as true. You understand? Um, that they might be saved. That they might be saved. So we must have a love of the truth. You understand? That's a good thing to pray for to Abba, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, of Yeshua, is pray for a love of the truth. Pray for wisdom. You understand? That they might be saved, not by their own effort, you know what I'm saying? But by his grace. You know what I'm saying? By his grace. It says, then for this cause, God, Ha Elohim, or Jah, if you please, shall send them strong delusion. So it says that those who don't have a love of the truth, it's interesting that those who can't believe the reality, and we show them the evidence, they can believe a lot of stuff that is basically like the Bible says right here, strong delusion. You know what I'm saying? They believe all kind of, they see a movie and the special effects are good, and they're like, yo, man, that was real. That was almost like, that was like real. And you're like, but I've been showing you reality and the evidence, you know what I'm saying? And you don't, it's because you got to recognize, you got to know what the word is. You know what I'm saying? So your spiritual eyes are open that they might, that they should believe a lie. So they will believe a lie, but not the truth because they didn't have a love of the truth. So one can seek knowledge and not develop, you know, a love of the truth. You know, we've been looking at knowledge, what knowledge is, and how knowledge, science, how knowledge is important. But then if one don't have a love of the truth, you see, if you have a, it's, it's almost like um, if you're the type of, if you're a parent or if you're one who has a certain responsibility over others that you're, you're like, just tell me what happened. You understand? It's, it, it, I'm not going to be angry with her, but you just want to know what happened. In other words, you want to know what the truth is. You, you know what I mean? I mean, are, are you ever like that, that you just want to know what the truth is? You understand? It's not so much a blame. You just want to know what happened. You know what I'm saying? And once you find out, you may not like what you hear, but you like, okay, that's, because so, now you know. You know what I'm saying? 
some folks are not like that. You understand? Some folks, you got to check yourself out. And if you find yourself on the wrong side of this and you don't want to be on the wrong side of this, you know, you, you know, get on your bent knee to Abba, you know, and, and pray to the God, you know, send to the God within. And when we say the God within, we're saying in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus Christ. In other words, it's not out there. Yes, our Father in who art in heaven, you understand? But you have to, you have to first have rootage, as the Bible says, that many hear the word of the kingdom, but because they lack root in themselves. You know, by and by they're offended and they go out because they don't have a root in themselves. You know, they, they look at whether the other person is getting it, but they don't really check themselves out and say, am I getting it? Why am I not getting it? And really um, um, the resource of prayer is very, very important. You know, it says ask, you know, seek, and knock. It says that they might be, now these that, these that Jah will send a strong delusion on them, it's not because Jah is some wrathful God like the heathen and she didn't say. No, nah. it says right here because they, they didn't receive a love of the truth. You know, because they didn't receive a, they love the lie. So Jah sent on them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe, who did not admit, you know, who did not trust the truth, but had pleasure. They take pleasure in everything that is opposite to the way, the truth, and the life of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is not just saying white folks or these foreign nations, because really you have to recognize that at the heart of this word, you understand, is that so-called fig tree. The heart of this word is Beta Israel. Who is, Israel. who is the true Israel? Who are the lost sheep? of the house of Israel. Now, we, we, we're going to move a little bit forward from this um, reasoning on what race, you know, what race uh, um, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach is, but it's, it's quite evident. And one other place in Scripture that we touched on a little bit before, but we'll put this out here, that when folks say, well, it don't matter what race he is, you've got to look at um, first... Um, First John, we was there a little bit earlier in the in the first part of this. First John chapter, First John chapter um, four, where it says, "Hereby know ye the spirit of God." Here's how we know the spirit of God, and God is to say the truth, right? Hereby know we the spirit of the truth. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christos Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Now, we mentioned this before in the other vid. We said that when people say it doesn't matter what color he was, and they, they'll say it don't matter if he's black, white, yellow, purple, and then, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll go polka dot. That, you know, you'll be like, I mean, who are they mocking? You know what I'm saying? They're mocking truth. They're mocking God. They're mocking reality. They're mocking life. Because, like we just read before, they don't have a love of the truth. You know what I'm saying? But they take pleasure. There's some pleasure that their unregenerated souls um, feel some sort of temporal, some sort of temporal comfort in it. But they don't recognize that you 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 reap what you sow. And we're speaking ironically. We're speaking spiritually. You know what I'm saying? You reap what you sow. Now, God's word tells us that in the reality to those who pay attention, who have eyes to see and even can see in one's own life, you know what I'm saying, those, those so-called laws working, but now through grace, you know what I'm through repentance, you know what I'm saying, Yeshua HaMoshiach suspends those so-called laws as, as one accepts the truth and acts accordingly and allows that spirit, that new spirit, that new birth. We say as a Rastafari, as Rastafari, we say Rastafari is an inborn conception. That is true. But it's see, an inborn conception, it's like a woman has conceived, but now she has to go through those stages, you know what I mean, those trimesters, in, in bringing forward a successful birthing process. And the same is true for I and I as Rastafari. You know what I'm saying? So Bob Marley, he told us of the inborn, that Rastafari is an inborn conception. True, true. At the fulfillment of his, of his mission, he cited that relation of Christ. 
Now, there's a lot of stories about that. Some say he was no more a Rasta man because he became Ethiopian Orthodox, but that's not. No, he saw the other side. He had the father. He had Kedamawi Haile Salati. He had the father. He had Abu Kedus. But he, remember, one cannot enter to the father without Jesus Christos. And that was a message he wanted to put forward to the other brethren, but a lot of folks were still looking at this whole kind of black-white thing and was not properly, fully digesting that, that meal, that, that manner. You understand? That manner that had come down to us at that particular time. But here the word says that everyone that confesses that Jesus Christ was come in the flesh. Now, if someone is come in the flesh, it's like I and I has flesh, and ones and ones who, have, who are alive, they have flesh, right? So every flesh, even the Bible speaks about, um, when speaking about the whole regeneration, that whole going from mortality to immortality, that every, you know, there, there is flesh for every type of creature. For every type of creature, you look, at, you look at some reptilians, you see how they have certain type of flesh. You understand? You look at certain type of mammals, they have certain kind of flesh. You look at certain type of fish, they have scales, a certain type of flesh. You look at different human beings, different human beings have certain type of flesh. You know what I'm saying? So right here, it's, it's identifying that Christ must have come in the flesh, and everyone who identifies, so people who say it doesn't matter what race Jesus Christ is, and then claim to be Christian or religious or whatever, because they're trying to avoid some, some kind of, I don't want to talk about race, because what? Because what? I mean, since when people don't want to talk about race? You know what I'm saying? That race is what it's all about, right? Because Christ is the manifestation of, of that promise of the Almighty given in the Ganetta Aden, being fulfilled, you understand, know, through the, the agency of the Black Madonna of Kedistin Gulmaria. You know, and so we know that, you know, the Black Mary, you understand, know, or the Black Madonna, she gave birth to a black child. But, but they're still able to deceive people that, that even though they see that, they still show you the Black Madonna here, and then they show you a white Jesus. You understand? Know and then people don't even know, well, the background of that, you know what I'm saying, basically was solidified in 1492. Remember what the Bible said, that there was a mystery of iniquity that already was working? Remember the, the Romans were considering themselves the Caesars, were considering themselves gods, so after different Caesars died, they would basically make them gods, and people would propitiate them and worship them and burn incense to them and so forth and so on, right? Now, here it says the false doctrine of Christ's person. And we really have to be clear. On, it's not just about the person of Christ, but the person is a very important part, uh, aspect of it. It's like the first step is acknowledging the person. You know, like if, if I said somebody's coming, they're going to give you some money. They're going to give you a gift. They're going to give you some wealth or some, some goodness, some salvation and righteousness, right? And you'll be like, well, who's the person? I say, well, his, his name is... Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? And you say, oh, Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua HaMoshiach? Um, where he's from? Nazareth. Oh, Yeshua of Nazareth? What does he look like? Oh, he got woolly hair um, and, 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 you know, like, like brass that's burnt in the furnace? Yeah. yeah, his complexion, his feet and his complexion is like that. Wouldn't that help you to identify who he is? Now, if it's saying here in 1 John chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, that there's a way to identify when it says try every spirit, don't believe, there's many false prophets. And then right after it says false prophets, it says that, that one who confesses that Yeshua HaMoshiach has come in the flesh. Now some will say, well, this was talking about the so-called Gnostics, because they believe that Jesus didn't really come in the flesh, but he was kind of spiritual. That's not, that's not, that's, that's not what it's talking about. You know what I'm saying? It's talking about what's going on today when people say it doesn't matter what race Jesus Christ was. You know what I'm saying? Because the Bible clearly contradicts what they're saying. So we have to ask ourselves, who are going to believe the preacher, the pastor, or some theologian that's telling us a bunch of mumbo-jumbo, but very clearly and very easy, easy reasoning, you can recognize that it's saying that one to confess that yes, was Christ was to come in the flesh. So the next step is, well, what sort of flesh and what sort of race. That's why it connects Christ with a particular seed, and that seed being the seed of David. That means that seed of David, even in our present time, must have a living, 
example or representation in the earth, plus, since it's the throne of David, it's the monarchy, they must have a throne, you know what I'm manifest in the earth that is as real as the European so-called monarchy, the Holozerns, or, or whoever else these people may be. So it says, in every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is, 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 is come in the flesh is not of God. So it's telling us that every spirit that confesses and admits that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, right, in the flesh. So when one say, well, it doesn't matter what race Jesus Christ is. As a Christian, you have to check that out, really. You've got to check out what you're saying. Okay, he must have come in flesh. And we don't know of any flesh that's like invisible flesh. You know, like, like he came in the flesh, but his flesh was clear, so you saw straight through it. Are you trying to say that he was European or white in another way? You understand? Because he was, it, 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 what are you saying? He wasn't black, he wasn't brown, he wasn't red, but he was white, like, a, like the white canvas in a sense, where you can paint over whatever you want. You understand? So as they try to say that it doesn't matter what race, he, because this is truth. Right? This, this is how we can identify it, and this is, how, this is what explains what this world is about. You know what I'm saying? This is what explains, you no know, one of things are so upside down. No one of things are so evil. You know what I mean? It, it really begins to make sense. You know what I'm saying? They took his true person and replaced it with a counterfeit like the Bible tells you, and it says that the whole world, right, the whole world would worship the image of the beast. I mean, it, it is so interesting that we see new Christians popping up all the time all over the world, and whenever they see this image, they recognize it as so-called Jesus Christ, but that is not the flesh that he came in. This is why it said that they would have an antichrist, a counterfeit Christ, another Jesus, another gospel, and another spirit. And you can see that in your Bible, even in the King James Bible. That's why they have Holy Ghost there. Now, if you remember, there was a scene where Christ was walking on the water, right? And his disciples, when they saw Christ walking on the water, they were afraid. They were like, uh, like it's a ghost, you know. They were like, hey, you know, this is crazy. You know, who's this walking on water? And then Christ had said to them, I am not a ghost. It is, it is I. Be not afraid. Now, it's interesting if you look into the Greek, if you look into the the Ethiopic, or we look into the Royal Amharic of the Metzhoff Kedus, His Majesty's Book of the Seven Seals, and you find that there's two different words used. When it says, and they thought they saw a ghost or a phantasm, a fantasia, phantasm, I think is part of the root that connects to the root of the Greek right there. But then that can be translated as ghost. So you notice in the Bible how many places in the King James Version it would say Holy Ghost. Now, I know that the Almighty, you know, he, 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 he judges us on what we know and the sincerity that we know. So if one didn't know it and out of tradition was saying, oh, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, and they say, well, things still worked out for me because John knew that you was ignorant. You know what I'm saying? But he calls, he winks at the times of ignorance, but he calls all men, all human beings, irregardless of their race, nationality, color, or class, he calls everyone to repentance because what, what is prophesied to happen, you understand, if it is to happen on the face of this earth, it's going to affect everyone. You understand? It's going to affect all of us. Now, let's look right here. Right here it says that, that the ones that don't confess that he's come in the flesh, they are not of God. That means they are not of the spirit and they are not of the truth. You know what I'm saying? They're not of the truth, right? And so it goes on to say, and this is the spirit of Antichrist. This is the spirit of the opposer, the one who opposes the anointed, the one who opposes the Moshiach. Every time I think of opposition to the Moshiach as, as a remnant of Jah's people, I just think about the whole COINTELPRO thing, because they said right in their documents they was to stop the rise of the black messiah. So I begin to wonder, well, um, who were they stopping the rise of? Who were they seeking to stop the rise of? They were seeking to stop the rise of Haile Selassie I in the consciousness of the lost sheeple, you understand, in the consciousness of the lost people. And I think another reason why Babylon hated on, um, you know, um, Michael Jackson, I know people say this is a far stretch, but think about it, you know, and 
just just note that I just said this is my opinion on this that um Michael Jackson when he did the Ethiopia thing, remember when they had the big famine, the real famine in the time of Mengistu, you understand? Um they had this famine up in Ethiopia and a lot of Ethio in the 80s, a lot of Ethiopians, according to news and, and uh, all, all the sources that were coming out, they were starving. You understand? And it's like that didn't get on any media because it was going on for a little bit. But nobody was talking about it, at least not in America. You know, like on the international level, people in other countries probably knew about it. But uh, in, the, in the West... We didn't know about it because they wanted to cut off that connection because every time Ethiopia came up in the news in a powerful way, like during the time of Malaku Emmanuel Bayan, you know, saying during his time or during the time of the Ethiopian World Federation and the fascist invasion of Ethiopia, black people seemed to make a connection, you understand, and, and they almost lost their, their slaves. We almost became so-called runaway slaves on them. So they didn't want to say nothing about it. But here's what's interesting, is that it was Michael Jackson who, when he heard about what was going on with the famine, that he, he took his star power or his celebrity or whatever to draw attention and even link up with the Canadians. And then after a while, when everybody in this hemisphere was talking about it, then event, and it was Michael Jackson and all these big-time stars and everything. It was hard to suppress that. But I think that they, they, they dislike that for a long, long time, that whole we are the world, you know. That's why now it's being used for all other sort of things, if you think about it. But it was specifically for Ethiopia because Ethiopia has a special place with God's people. I mean, all of the biblical scriptures prove that. Now, it's true that there's careless Ethiopian. It's true that, that Jah will use his own sword against those careless Ethiopians. But, you know, Father chastises whom he loves. That's why it says his sword. You know, the same thing with the Israelites. So we see that connection right there. Um, because people who are in a covenant, you know, if you're in an agreement and you break an agreement, you know there's penalties to it, basically. So, so we as Beta Israel part of the reality of our enslavement and what we have gone through is a part of that prophecy, that pro prophetical word in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to verse 68 significantly. It gives us a very, very good overview. And we got a couple of books right here that you need to check out to know more about um, who we are as Beta Israel and black people and the Israelites. This book here from Babylon to Timbuktu. This book is by Rudolf R. Windsor. It's a very, very, um, it's a very, very important book for I and I, for anyone who want to get a good overview of who we are, where we're from, and even um, how many African so-called, there are many Hebrews who are um, amongst many African tribes. You understand? Because that's where we fled, you understand, after 70 A.D., after the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, those who were able to escape fled into Africa. Now, this book actually deals with the valley of the skull and bones, no, the valley of the dry bones. That particular prophecy right there where it speaks of the conditions that face black people in America. And I don't know how many of you all have a copy of this, but we've uh, made recourse to this as of late with the whole political landscape, what's going on in America, the Obama thing, the haters, and this and that. And, and that book is very, very interesting as far as that goes. But it's a, it, these are foundational things for ones who really want to be able to put, the, you know, put it together, you understand, know, before it's too late, right? Now, here it basically tells us in uh, the first epistle of John, chapter 4, verse 3, that every spirit that doesn't confess that Jesus Christ, or Jesus Christ, is come in the flesh, is not of God. Everyone that doesn't, so when they say it doesn't matter what color he is, you know, then whenever, or what, what race he is, that, that's, a, that's a lie in two ways. Because race equals seed. He is of the seed of David. In fact, if he's not of the seed of David, right, he doesn't qualify, right? Isn't that correct? If, if Jesus Christ was not of the seed of, now we know that Caesar Borgias, Caesar Borgias was not of the seed, he was not of the seed of David. So therefore, he doesn't qualify. 
and that guy with the fourteen, the the, the fourteen ninety two, he don't qualify either. Basically, the same guy. You understand? Know Before there were Leonardo DiCaprio and these actors. This was this was the big act right here. You understand? Know and people still falling for it. You understand? Know now, he him, right? His Majesty is of that that race or that seed of David. You understand? Know and there's more than, you know, there's so many points of correspondence in the Ethiopian testimony, you know, and that proves that. I mean, when you really match that up against everyone else, all other claimants. So when we're speaking about we're in the fig tree generation, yes, we are the fig tree generation. But unfortunately, there's a lot of false signs that have been pointed to, you understand? Know, but it's very interesting when you start to look at our story, in particular with the one whom his majesty sent, Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan. You look at the date, Shashimani, the land grant, we can see that the nation of Israel, which is composed of we as the, the, the once lost but now found, Beta Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, you understand, you can recognize that this is our nation, we're coming together. You understand, so they say when you see these things happening, you understand? But, but this is only known to those of us who seek it. A lot of, you only really hear it in the media. Whenever they speak about it, they always make it like, you know, a side issue or something like that. Because like the Bible says, if we were of the world, the world would hear us. So this proves that we're not speaking the worldly message, right? But now as we go on, it says, so, so this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. It says that ye, speaking of we, are of God. We are of Jah. We are of Ha Elohim. Little children. And have overcome them. Now, you notice what it doesn't say here? It doesn't say we shall overcome. Now, now that, that's very important where we're going with this. Because this, that, that now connects with, um, with Jeremiah. Right, Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter chapter twenty one. And now we're still in this Torah portion week, RSS forty four, Devarim. We want to do a teaching on Devarim, Devar, Debar, Deborah, get to the root of this word, and then also bring into that the, the holy place. The holy place in the tabernacle um, is called the the Debir, the Debir or the Debir. Right, and in the Bamarinya, in the Ethiopic, we have Debre, right, Debre or Deber too, which means a mountain or a monastery. The Deber is the mountain or the monastery. Then, in addition to that, we have Tabor. Now, the Mount of Tabor is where Christ transfigured himself. You understand that he was seen conversing with uh, Mashu, Mo Moshe, Musa, Moses, and with and with um, Eliyahu or with Elijah, you understand, with Elijah. Now, that's very, very important, you know, Mount Tabor. So Tabor, Dabor, Debor, Devar, you know, is all linked together. But the key is that Devar means word. It means these are the words. You understand, we have to recognize how important word, sound, and power is. But first we have to go to the Logos. And what is the Logos? Who is the Logos? The Logos is our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua. You understand? So we recognize his race, right, in, 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 in truth. Now we have to deal with the spirituality part of it. The spirituality part is the word because this whole illusion is governed by word. You understand? We know how even words can affect us. So we have to recognize the power of word, sound, and power, right? It says, um, ye are of God. So when it says ye in the Bible, you have to know how to receive this. Because a lot of folks, they'll read the Bible, they'll say, ye are of God, little children, I've overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You'll be like, okay, yeah, that's good. But you don't, you're not receiving it. You, if you receive it, you will say, we are of Jah. And if you receive it even more, take it personal, I am of Jah, I'm his little child, you know, especially as we're newbies, you understand, and have overcome them. Who's the them? 
We have to recognize who is of them. It is speaking of antichrist, false prophets, deceiving spirits, all of them, right? Because greater is what? He that is in where? He that is in you, he that is in me, he that is in I and I, than he that is in the world. You see, you have to know how to receive this word because what happens, one read it and it's speaking to you, but you never receive it. You never say, well, wait, 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 it's saying that uh, ye are of God, and uh, ye, ye mean y'all, so it's talking to me too. It's like we're in a crowd of folk, and hearing this word being spoken, you know, saying to us, we're to receive it. See, a lot of times we don't do, we hear the word. It's like it says, do not be um, just uh, hearers of the word, but not doers of the deed. You know, so we can't do the deed if we don't receive the word if we don't understand the word. So the word is saying that we are of God. We're of the spirit and the truth as little children. And as little children, we've overcome them. Who we've overcome? The antichrist, the false prophets, the false spirits, right? The deceiving spirits. It says because, now this is, this is important, because you have to recognize if we've overcome them, how have we overcome them? Do we overcome them because we have a lot of money? Do we overcome them because we, we win the lottery? I mean, do we overcome them because we dress better than them? I mean, do we overcome them because we're more arrogant or we're, we're a bad boy, I'm a bad boy, you know, I'm a gangster, yo. You know what I'm saying? Do we overcome them because of that? No, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? We overcome them because greater is he that is in you. Now, the he, we, no, we have to identify who is the he. So let's ask you, since some folks say it doesn't matter what race Jesus is, let's just ask you a question. Who is the he that is in you? Is it this he that's in you? Is this the he that's in you? Well, if this is the he that's in you, that is the world. That is the God of the world. You know what I'm saying? Or is it he that is in you? You know what I'm saying? Is it our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that is in you? You see, so you have to identify this. That's what they call meditation. When you meditate on it, now that you've read it, now that you understand the basic context, you have to ask yourself, well, now, how, the, how, how is this relative, you understand? How, how does this now point to, to myself in relation to the Almighty or the Almighty rather in relation to I? So the Almighty in relation to I and I is that because he is in us and he is greater than the one who is in the world. So it's clearly defining a, this duality here, you understand, between our black Lord and Savior Adonai, you understand, and between the, the Antichrist or Satan, you understand, or, or the God of this world as the Bible itself speaks. And it's a little bit forward. It says, they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world. So they hear people in the world say, well, you know, and, and, and notice this, bros, uh, brothers and sisters, that after we prove the point, after the point becomes so roundly and soundly proven by, by so many ones and ones, then they turn around and say, you know what, it don't even matter. <laughs> you know, when you grow, I don't know if you, when you was growing up, if you went through those things with, you know, some kids were like that. You understand? They'll pop all this expletive, delete it, delete it. And then when you challenge them, they'll say, well, it really doesn't matter anyway. You understand? But they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. We, we, right, are of God. We are of God. He that knoweth God. And what is, knows the truth connection. When we say God, God, in the practical reality, is the truth. It's the truth concerning him and his word, his son, and I and I, you understand, as born-again sons and daughters. We are of Jah. He that knoweth Jah, or God, the truth, heareth I and I. He that is not of Jah, he that is not of the truth, don't hear us, heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth, right? What I'm saying is the spirit of truth. And the spirit of error. So there's two spirits that accompany this choice. And, and this, is, this is kind of where we're at right now. You know, and not just the image. The image is an important placeholder. 
It's both the image, because the image is part of the truth. If you say, well, it doesn't matter, that's a cop-out. That's like those um, fallen or those angels that didn't join sides in the rebellion. They was not on John's side. They was not on Satan's side. You know what I'm saying? They stood in the middle, frozen psychological. You, you know what I mean? State. They were split in two as hypocrites deserve to. Because no choice for or against the truth. You remember what it says about lukewarm? He says, but if you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. It's like you ever, on a, on a hot day, you want to drink something cold, somebody bring you a lukewarm something, and you think it's cold, and you put it, it's, it's nasty. It's disgusting. That's how we are if we're lukewarm. You know what I'm saying? If we're lukewarm, either be hot for job or be cold for job. Don't be, well, I'm a little bit lukewarm. You know, I'm a little bit country. I'm a little bit rock and roll. You know, no, no, no. You, you have to work that out because hereby know we the spirit of truth, and the spirit of error. It says, Beloved, beloved, what I judge, what I judge, right? It says, Let us make us love one another. Make us love one another. Speaking about our brothers and sisters in the faith, right? It's not speaking about, oh, let's just love everybody, love, love, love. Now, here people get mixed up. They say, The Bible says, For love is of God. Love in this context is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Now, people will take that love is of God because, like I was going to say, God is love. And even tells us early that if we love God, we would keep his commandments. Why? Because his commandments are not burdensome. If we truly love God and keep his commandments, it's not a burden. It's not like we're doing something that makes us uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? But we take pleasure in unrighteousness, and we don't have a love of the truth, we're just deceiving ourselves. You know what I'm saying? So here it says, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God towards us. Now, now what manifests how Jah has loved us this is why Christ, Yeshua, the Son, is so very important to enter into the Father. We may identify the Father. You know what I'm saying? We identify Him, but we cannot enter into or enter to Him. We cannot approach Him unless it's in and through His Son. we gotta, we got to recognize that. You know what I'm saying? We don't have enough credit in and of ourselves in the natural, in our old man. The old man don't have no, the old man is dead to John. Only through the new man, only through Yeshua HaMoshiach says, in this was manifest the love of God toward us, toward I and I and I. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Did you hear that? That we might do what? Live. Our liberty as true Rastafari is in and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, in word, spiritually, right, and in truth, spiritually. Let's recognize that right there. So John manifested his love toward us. They got haters out there. Oh, oh, how are you going to say somebody's the only begotten? That's devil talk. It's all, you know, the only one that would talk like that is the devil because the devil never was called John's son. You understand? Know that was his, maybe his problem. You know what I'm saying? But he wasn't Jah's son. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't Jah's son like Jah's son is Jah's son. Let's recognize that. You know what I'm saying? Here it says that the love was manifested because God sent, sent. He sent his only begotten son into the world. Why? That we might live through him. So when we are born again, we live through him. It's just like the teaching of his majesty states. Right? If you get to go with him or you or you search out the key essential speeches of His Majesty, and we compile them right here with some additional um, notes, you understand? Um, you'll recognize you understand, that what the teaching of His Majesty concerning Christ is our liberty. That's our liberty. Everything else is just accessory. You understand? Everything else is accessory. Everything else beside the teaching of His Majesty is accessory. You understand? And it might even be criminal if it's apart from the teaching of his majesty. So it's not just accessory, it's an accessory to a crime. 
You understand? Know this book is a very good book right here, The Roots of Rastafari. I think a Gentile woman, Virginia Lee Jacobs or whatever, wrote it, but she wrote a very interesting and good book, some real foundational things, even touching on the Tawahido and the true... Um, for lack of a better word, theology, because Theo or Theo mean God and Logos mean word, so it's the God word. This is what we're teaching here. The teacher of his majesty is the God word, right? So we might live. We are to live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God. You know, not that we love God. People say, oh, I love the Lord. I love God. I love God. No, no, no. The word says... Have you not read? The word says here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. He loved I and I and sent his son to be the propitiation, to be the propitiation of our sin. Now, you know what's very key here? You have to remember that John is an Israelite. So he's first and foremostly writing this, all right, to the Israelite. It doesn't, it's not limited. You have to remember what John did. John said, I have a tree right here, right? But some of the branches are bad. You know, we try to work it out, but they're not being the right fruit. So he broke off these branches, the natural branches. That was us as the black sheep, as, as the Israelites, the blacks. You know, before we lost our identity, he broke us off, right? He scattered us. He dispersed us. And then he grafted in, you know what I'm saying, because... Um, what does Christ says? Christ says that I am the vine and my father is the what? The husband man. So the father, he grafted in these wild olives, you know, these, these wild olives, you know, these wild branches, right? And that's all these other nations, the Europeans, so forth and so on. But he says in the latter days, you know what I'm saying, which we are in these latter days, Ketamawi Haile Salase, he's that one that says, uh, unless God cuts the days short, None of, none of, not even the elect, not even I and I as the elect, as Rastafari would be saved because we would not even be Rastafari unless he had cut these days short. You know what I'm saying? Cutting the days short. Remember, it was him who on May 5th, 1941, he basically spoke about the godless and the cruel dragon, which is newly oppressing humanity. Folks didn't know what he was talking about until about um, how many years later? Until 51 years later, right? 51 years later after 1941, or, or, or really 50 years later, what, 1991? But they didn't really learn the fullness until maybe, maybe 60 years later. You know what I'm saying? And 60 years later in what, what was it, 2000, 2001? Then people say, oh, New World Order, Illuminati, Secret Society, skulls and bones, serpents and dragons, and oh, wow, they worship these things. How Selassie said it from then, because Ethiopia was that first victim. You know what they always say, the black man is like the last hired, the first fired? You know what I'm saying? So Ethiopia, you know what I'm saying, it represented that, 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 that like lamb in a sense that was slain or, or, or that first sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? On this altar of white supremacy, you know what I'm saying? Back in His Majesty's time, you know what I'm saying? Just like they did with David when David was a, was crowned as king. If you read the Bible, when David was first crowned as king, who was the first one to attack him? It was the Philistines. The Philistines were the first to attack David because they knew that David, you understand, was a you know was a, was a strong and a faithful king. So they said before he even gets too comfortable in his reign. Let us attack him. That was the wrong move. They lost, just like what happened, you understand, with I and I boss. They lost against the king of kings. You understand? They lost against his majesty. You understand? And um, so right here, the, the love life, it says, is shown by the life of love. So, beloved, my brothers and sisters, if John so loved us, remember Yeshua's name, Yeshua's name, Jesus' name, he, he saved his people, right? He came to his own, but his own did not what? I mean, does that, isn't that, doesn't that sound like the classic definition of black folks? You know what I'm saying? Of lost sheeple? You know, that's the classic definition. Every other people except 
even, you know, all kind of people and their people. They accept each other. They, they, they have some strange Gentile love for each other. But, but we're those people that seem to really fit that biblical description because we are that people. You know what I'm saying? They say, if it looks like a duck, talks like a duck, whatever like that, it's a duck, right? But love, if John so loved I and I, we ought also to love one another. So it's saying that we should get off this black on black violence, this black on black hate, once we come into our position, you know what I'm saying, in Christ. What is our position in Christ? So, you know, a lot of folks say, yeah, Jesus is black. But we have to go beyond just that. I mean, that is the first step. You know, that's the obvious. I mean, you know, that's the, if somebody's going to lie about the obvious, then how can they tell you about the mysteries of God contained in here that can only be opened up spiritually? You know what I'm saying? That's why you got a lot of people reading this that don't understand what it is because they're not seeking it the right way. They're seeking the right things the wrong way. It says, no man have seen God at any time. Now, somebody had mentioned this and said, how can we say his majesty is God? Well, it said that no man, according to that time, has seen God because no man could see God and live except for Yeshua HaMoshiach. You understand? Because of Christ and because of the grace of Christ, now man can approach to the Father. You understand? Because the Father is holy. He is Kedus. He is Abba Kedus. How can we approach the Holy Father being in our sinful state, being without the proper, you know, the proper sacrifice to restore that breach between God and man? And that was his son whom he sent. That was Yeshua HaMoshiach for a specific people. You know what I'm saying? But not limited to that people, but at first the Jew, and then what? The Gentile. That's the Bible tell you, first the Jew. You know what I'm saying? And then the Gentile. So one has to recognize who God's people are and who we are in God. So no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. If we, so that means it's a choice. It's our choice. We can't hate on one another and keep hating on each other. Or we as the 12 tribes, as the different nationalities, you know, of black peoples and peoples related to this, to this tree, you know, in the broken branch of the tree, as we start to love one another, guess what? It says that, it says, or know this, not even guess. It says, know this right here. It says that, that if we love one another, God dwelleth. He dwells. He's indwelling in us. You know what I'm saying? And his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. Remember one time in Rastafari we used to speak about the Isla Irits and it really meant what the Bible said. You understand that we were more in a sense seen like metaphysical then. There was a there was a there was a time. You know what I'm but that time will be again. And that time is now. And we have seen and do testify that the Father, the Abba, sent his son to be the what? The Medhane Alem, to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus Yeshua is the Bain Ha Elohim. God dwelleth in him and he in God. And you know who confessed that? You know who confessed that? It was the Ethiopian eunuch. Go to Acts of the Apostles, write this down and look it up. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. You'll see when the Ethiopian eunuch said, what prevented me from being baptized? And Hawadia uh, Philippos, um, Philip, he said, um, if you will, my men, if you will admit, if you will trust, you understand, if you be a faithful and true witness, you understand, that Yeshua HaMoshiach is the Son of God. And he said, yes, I admit, I need my um, 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 ki, uh, Yeshua, um, Yeshua, Yeshua Bain uh, Ha Elohim Hu. I, I think that's the Hebrew. If I, if I miss something, forgive me on that. But we're going to get into that Hebrew part. But you see it there in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 37. But I have to say this, that in some of your Bibles, that verse might not be there. If you have some of these new funny Bibles, because now they're trying to say that the Ethiopian eunuch or the Ethiopian Hebrew eunuch's witness, remember he was in Jerusalem for the high holy days. It was only the Judahites or the Jews or the Israelites 
those who were of the tribe of Israel that could still travel to the holy place that went there for the high holy day of Pesach, of Fasica, you know, saying, which commemorates the exodus, the coming out of, of the bondage of Egypt, you know, saying, of the Beit Israel under Moshe, under Moses. So, that's just a note right there, but it's interesting that it says right here, and we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus, that Yeshua, is the Bain Ha Elohim, is the world that is the Son of God. God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed or admitted or trusted the love that Jah hath to us. We, we, we trust that. We don't doubt it. Don't let Satan make you doubt the love of Jah towards you in and through Yeshua HaMoshiach and through the grace of God. Don't, don't, don't. You know, Jah is love, right? And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in Jah and Jah in him. So it's not just talking about the love of God, but it's also talking about the love of the brotherhood, the love of the family, the love of brothers and sisters in the spirit of God. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, that's spirituality. You want to talk about spirituality? That's spirituality. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. That we may have what? Boldness? That we're going to be scared? We're going to be scared? Oh, man, yo, this is judgment time, man. Yo, the world is spinning out, of course. But it says what? That we may have what? boldness in the day of judgment because as he is check this out y'all as he is so are we in this world now if that doesn't i'm not gonna say rock your socks you know i don't know if you're wearing socks i'm not wearing socks right now but that's my business but this right here really you have to kind of like you have to you have to meditate on that right there. Do you have your Bibles? I mean, some of you, if you're just listening, pause it, please. Get a Bible. Go to the Blue Letter Bible site and go to um, um, First Epistle of John, Chapter 4, and just read here with I, verse 17. It says, Herein is our love made perfect. Now, some folks say there's nothing perfect. Mm hmm. Now, I want you to be able to discern spirits, because this is something the Holy Spirit said. We have to be able to discern spirits, right? Now, notice this right here. It says, herein is, the, is our love made perfect. So, when folks tell you there's nothing perfect, is that the, the, the spirit of truth speaking, or is that the spirit of error? When they say there's nothing perfect, spirit of truth or spirit of error? If you said that's the spirit of of um, um, truth, right, that there's nothing perfect, you need to rewind this video, take it back to the beginning, and kind of look through it and pay a little more attention. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking for real, right? But if you said the spirit of error, then you are true. You understand? You are true. Because it says, herein is our love made perfect. You understand? It's made, see, perfect in this sense means complete. It means it's not lacking anything. You understand? It's not lacking in, in, in any way. John doesn't want us to be lacking. He says, the Lord is our shepherd. I shall not want. That means I shall not lack anything because he's a good shepherd. You know what I'm saying? He knows what his sheep, what his sheep will need as long as the sheep will recognize the true shepherd. You know what I'm saying? The true shepherd. Now, here it says, herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness. That we may have what? boldness in what? In the day of judgment. That is the key. Mm -hmm. So you've seen all these crazy acts of violence in the news. You know, you're seeing all this murder, people, oh, the end of the world, I've seen too many movies, and i got to go crazy, and, and they think they're the Joker or something, you know, or there's schemes and conspiracy. Everybody's gone crazy. There's no, where's the boldness? Right, because there's something bigger than just even all this illusion that man has some temporal um, control or part to play in it. But it says that we, that I and I, 
that I and I may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is. And you know when you say he is in the Hebrew, it's almost like saying Yah. It's like Yah. Yah. He who is. He is. He's living. He be. Basically it's like he be. So we can read this as because as he be, right, so are we in this world. As he be, so are we in this world. This is like a great like morning prayer, and even when you're going to rest, like read over this and really get it. You know what I'm saying? Really receive it, should we say. There, there is no fear in love. In other words, there's no fear in the true love of Jah. You know what I'm saying? And through the love of Yeshua HaMoshiach. But perfect love, right? Perfect love, it does what? Perfect love, it casts out, it casts out fear. Perfect love, the perfect love of Jah, it casts out fear. You know, like some people say, well, such and such and such, but you know, some folks I'm not gathering with because some folks are telling me boldly they don't care about the teaching of His Majesty, but they're going to say they're Rasta and stuff. Well, you gather with your tears. You know what I'm saying? I and I will gather with the wheat that Jah is putting into His barn. If you understand what that, that, what that means, you do as well as. Right? It says, because fear has torment. You see, fear has torment. You know, and a lot of us allow a lot of things in this world to torment us. We are allowing it. And we say, oh, John, don't let me feel this way. You're allowing yourself to feel that way because you, you, you put your own faith in it. You put your belief, you put your trust in things that have proven themselves to be incredible. And incredible means not credible. You know how they do that? The credit. They give you credit. Right? Credit basically means a belief. It's a religion. You don't get it, right? The whole credit card, it's a religion. You don't get how it's a religion. And that's why the Bible speaks in those terminology. They talk about the, the cathedral of commerce. They're telling you a cathedral of commerce, so what's the God? They tell you what the God is. They say the almighty dollar. The dollar ain't almighty. Uh, how come the dollar ain't saving itself? What, the dollar's going to resurrect? Come on, don't believe the lie. It's a sequel. It's Babylon Part 2. It says, because fear hath torment, he that feareth, he who is afraid, it says, is not made perfect in love. That means either they're impatient or they did not allow God's love to have its perfect work or they wasn't overstanding yours in the word. That's why it says that um, when one hears the word of the kingdom, mm-hmm, and they understand of it not, then cometh the evil one, right, who is Satan or the adversary. You see, because to the adversary, we look like the adversary. But we really don't care what we look like to the adversary. We know that the adversary is our adversary because Jah give us the logistics. He give us the logos. He give us the words so we recognize what our adversary, who our adversary is. You know, whether they are our color they could be our color. They don't have to be our kind. And that takes, that takes spiritual discernment, right, and also boldness. He that heareth, he that feareth, right, is not made perfect in love. He who fears, he who is he's in torment. You know what I'm saying? That means he don't trust Jah. He trusts the world. Or he trusts all the illusion that he's seen out there in the world. He trusts, he, he thinks the arm of flesh is greater than the almighty arm of Jah. You understand? And that's a lie. So it says, we love him because he first loved us. You know, so people who say, yeah, I love God. I love God. So, so ask them, right, well, um, why do you love God? I, it's, sometimes I'm, I just get curious like that. Why do you love God? Because I wonder, are they gonna, what are they going to say? You understand? But here it tells us what we should say and how we should recognize this. We love him because he first loved us. So it's not like we love him because we loved him first. Like people say, oh, I found the Lord. You found him where? You found him. He found you. You know what I mean? That's how you know that something is not really right. Either they're receiving it wrong or they didn't get the right, you know, they didn't get the right one as it was. Because the word is what really distinguishes that word. The word is dead in the book, but it's in us with the Holy Spirit. It becomes living. You understand? It opens up the living matrix. If a man say, 
if a man say, if any man say, I man, you man, he man, she man, whoever man say, right, I love God and hate his brother. Now, this is the key thing because, remember, there's a qualification of who is our brother, who is our sister, who is our mother, one who seeks to do the will of the Father. That means that one must know what the will is. They can't say, oh, I do the will of the Father, like I'm doing job work, and you're just feeding your face. I mean, um, that's not job work. That's your work. You understand? That's, that's your work. That's not job work. Job will provide for that. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, which means seek the Father, God, the Father, his kingdom, and his Son, and Yeshua HaMashiach, because Yeshua HaMashiach is God's righteousness. That's what makes us righteous. You know what I'm saying? Not what we say or do or think. That's self-righteous. Because by your qualification, but remember, you can't save yourself apart from his salvation and his way and his direction. His Holy Spirit is what saves us. And his Holy Spirit mingling with our spirit. You understand? Know That's what when we save ourselves. It's not that we save ourselves, but his spirit gives us the ability and the direction to make the righteous and the right choices and move in the righteous direction. You understand? Know it says that if one say, I love God and hate of his brother, it says he is a liar. He is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? I mean, that's very interesting. You know, if, if we're speaking of the king of kings, right, if we're speaking of, of, of the roots of Rastafari, if we're speaking of Christ and his kingly character and our own so-called Rasta brother, whatnot, hates us, why they hate us, you know, they have no good reason. Basically, they hate us because of the gospel of the king of kings, because the gospel of the king of kings it shows too much light on their folly, their folly in our Father's name. And they think we're trying to stop their pleasure and unrighteousness. No, we're, we're trying to say stop slandering the name of his. It's better for you to be cold about this than lukewarm about this, you understand, or then to be a wolf in sheep clothing about this, because this is real. You understand, not just to us. But it's real. It's even real. You know, we'll get into that right there. But it's the key thing it lays down is how can one say that they love God and hate their brother? And you have a lot of people who have a, have a so-called religion like that. Like, yeah, they're in this personal thing with God, but what about their brother? You know, what about the family? What about the church? You understand? Who, which loves God? See, the qualification you understand? Know is God, is Christ, is the qualification. So if your brother loves God, you understand, know based, on, based on God's word, and you hating on them, then there's something else moving in you. You understand? Know so, so you need to check that out. You understand? Know before it's too late. Verse 21, it says, And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. You see, that, that, that kind of goes along with another message we did um, a little bit earlier about the turn your, the other cheek. Some people think it means that we need to turn the other cheek to the, um, the, 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 the Gentiles, you understand, who basically, you know, live by the sword, and John said they die by the sword, who took us into captivity, and John said that they go into captivity, that we should turn the other cheek. Like some of, uh, some, some, ones who call themselves Rasta are starting to say, well, forget about slavery, repatriation, reparation, because this is going to upset some of their so-called good white friends. If their good white friends were truly in Christ's salvation, they would be at the head of the line saying that, yes, this is true. You understand? Because that means that they, they love the truth. But what they love is their money, they love their wealth, and they think like, oh, it's going to be a, a transfer of wealth. Yes, there will be a transfer of wealth, but the real wealth is not their, their dollars and cents and paper that they print. The real wealth is the earth. Let's recognize the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So this has this been a little bit longer than on this particular point right here. I began off speaking about, um, about, about what race Yeshua HaMoshiach is. You know, so what race Jesus Christ is. And, and just to kind of just briefly recap, 
basically the Bible says he's a Jew, right? And some people say, well, it don't matter what race he is, but the Bible teaches that race is the seed. It says that, that Christ must be of the seed of David. You understand? It speaks about what seed so forth he, he must be of. Because Jah gave his word, said that from the seed or through the seed of David, the lines of David, will come the Messiah. You understand? Even in the end times. And now we have a positive link with both the seed and with the throne of David. You understand? In Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, and through him. You understand? As well as we have the true gospel, you understand, of Christ and the King of Kings. So um, those points, the Jew point, he was a Jew, right? That's what the Bible says, Judah, the tribe Judah. Tacitus says that the Jews were of the Ethiopian prolem or of the race of the Ethiopians. We have Acts of the Apostles, chapter um, 8, you know what I'm saying, where we have an Ethiopian eunuch who is returning from Jerusalem, and this is at the very season which is, which is sacred to all Hebrews, especially um, nearly 2,000 years ago, you know, saying he came from Ethiopia, which means that there was other Ethiopians who probably were, were not able to travel like he was. He had his own chariot, his own ride, his own servant, so forth and so on. So we know that he was a treasurer, so he had money, but regardless of the physical wealth, he was of the faith. So we have here an Ethiopian Jew you understand? Going to Jerusalem now, he's reading the prophet Isaiah. You understand? Reading the prophet Isaiah. So all those connections should show you he wasn't just like a, 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 a curious visitor. No, he came from worshiping in Jerusalem. Like the Muslims go to Mecca. You understand? In this present time, no matter whatever country they're in, they journey to Mecca at least once in their life or every year, however so many times they choose or are able to. The same way, and, and in fact, the Muslims, the Ishmaelites, got that from the Beit Israel, the Israelites. All right? So just some of those points right there. You understand? And we went through this kind of entire chapter right here again, um, First John, or the first epistle of John, which is called... Um, the family and the world. You know, in the family, I think that's so significant how that that has categorized the family. You know, in the family of God in Christ, the the Beta Christian in that time, in the new name, the the Beta Rastafari, the family, right, and the world. You know, in the world at large. You understand? So we went through the whole chapter to also just back up those points. When you hear people say, well, it doesn't matter what race Jesus is, that is a worldly sort of a thing. And this whole chapter kind of breaks down different aspects of that. It, it does matter. You understand? And, and, and otherwise, you're saying, that, you're saying that Christ didn't come in the flesh? Oh, 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 yes, he came in the flesh. But it doesn't matter what kind of flesh, whether he was light-skinned, dark-skinned, whatever. Um, um, they, they're trying to obfuscate the point. You understand? And that is like the world. They're not, the, the, the spirit of truth is not operating in them. Because if the spirit of truth is operating in them, in them, then they should be familiar with this word, whether they've read it or whether they are attentive to the spirit of truth. Because the spirit of truth will tell them, um, don't even say that, because that's not true. You understand? And if they are obedient to that spirit of truth within, they won't say it. But if they do say it, either they've been misled you understand? Either they've been, you know, deceived, hoodwinked, bamboozled, or whatnot like that. They don't matter what race they are. You understand? Because it says the devil, Satan, has deceived the whole world. You understand? And we sum up, you know, with that, um, some of the images of that deception in the, in the contrast between um, Caesar Bogiers, right, and Yeshua HaMoshiach. So we just give you this right here as a... Uh, um, as an end, you know, as an end note on that. So which race he was of, it really does matter, my brothers and sisters. All right. So until we um, until we return, stay stay tuned. Um, shalom, Ras Teferi.